Hey up YouTube, today it's going to be a quick video, we're going to show you how to turn these, these, into slug traps, slug beer traps, so DIY homemade slug beer traps, hit the subscribe button if you like the sounds of that because there's more to come on, this pest con on these pest control things, on DIY pest control things, uh, one I'm hoping can save you guys a lot of money, so hit that subscribe button, hit that like button, and I'll see you in a minute. Good morning, YouTube. Right, okay, guys, this is kind of a bit difficult to understand or explain or show. It's uh, it's a little difficult. You, obviously, we've got clear bottles on a clear surface. I've tried putting things under it. Doesn't really help. Um, so I'm going to talk you through sort of what I've been doing to get to various stages. I've done in true Blue Peter fashion, I've done here's some I made earlier. So what we have here is a whole pot bottle. You see these three ribs? I'm hoping you can see these three ribs. All I do is I cut along here and here to take out that this is from a different bottle, so slightly different size, doesn't really matter. But I take out that middle three ribs section, okay? And just to show you that, here's one I made earlier. So cut across that rib, across that rib, there you go. That, in all honesty, I've not thought of a use for that short of cutting it into strips and maybe plant labels. Um, but, you know, I'm sure somewhere along the lines you'll find a use for it now two trick two things you can do here you can make a wasp trap using this put something sweet in the bottom take that bottle cap off the wasps will hopefully find will find their way down to it and can't leave but that's not what we're doing today today we're making a slug trap so you've reduced down the height of the two bottles now the slug trap i'm making is a beer slug trap <laughs> Um, so then what you need to do is you need to cut some ways for the slug to get in um, so next stage is we got this piece okay and we cut so once again hopefully you can see it you see on the bottle hopefully there's a little ridge where it's been moulded uh, and all I did was I cut down to that, cut across an inch or two, and then back up again. So sort of removing sort of that much. So as you can see, or hopefully you can see, hopefully it shows up a little bit. Taking out that bit of plastic. Do that on opposite sides and you end up with something resembling this slugs aren't bothered if it looks amazing guys and then on the top on the top section so that's that was this piece all I've done is take out a slightly smaller piece so it's it's about uh, three quarters of an inch about two centimeters long by the same breadth and the only, the way I get it is I cut this piece and then I sit that over and then I just mark on it with a pen or make two little snips because you want them to match up ideally and you can start to see where we're going with this now this last one I actually did some experimenting with and I am still going to use it but it's not what I'm going to do so this last one I roughed up with some sandpaper and I've used some hot glue I had my hot glue gun set too high which is why it's a little deformed but once again you, you see where I'm going with this I'm going to make this uh, this this one I'm going to put together for you now but you can see where I'm going now that is solid that's not coming apart now obviously when it comes to getting the slugs out you just tip them out of the big hole if you want to leave it in situ refill it you take the bottle cap off put some beer in it or once again just go through the holes obviously not completely waterproof but but more waterproof than Anything else. than uh, than something that doesn't have a top on it now these you probably could actually adapt to have if you wanted to if you were more structurally minded than me 
you could make little flaps to perhaps shelter these from the rain but that'll do for me and all I'll do is I'll bury it up to the height of the slit up to the height of the hole in soil put some beer in it along will come Mr Slug fall in there and have a nice peaceful happy uh, death so what I'm going to do for this one is I'm going to do slight, something slightly different. I'm not going to, uh, to hot glue it. At least I don't think I am. Although I have turned my hot glue gun down and it doesn't seem to have melted. Let's give it a go, eh? What I was going to do, just so that you guys can see, is I was just going to use some sellotape. And I was just going to put some sellotape on that piece and that would have held it just fine. Obviously, it wouldn't have lasted as long as something that was glued together. But that by the by so all i do so the hot glue works you should be able to see this is why i've had the camera set up at a funny angle is i'll just key it a little bit with a bit of sandpaper sorry i know it sounds awful and i'll just make a little bit of a, a rough patch on the outside there and then on the inside here Doesn't have to be a lot because you be, it's not going to need much glue. I mean, at the end of the day, these things ain't going to be moving around very much. So we just key. We're just putting a little key in just so that the glue's got something to grip. You don't have to use hot glue. Super glue would work. Uh, even sort of school PVA glue would work. Uh, I'm just using what I've got available. Uh, I did have a towel here somewhere. Beautiful uh, dish towel. And just get rid of the excess plastics obviously dust will also stop the glue from adhering so we'll get rid of that and then all we do is we try and act relatively quickly because hot glue doesn't say stay liquid for very long a blob a blob slide it on press it home for those that missed that, I had to do it quite quickly. See, the hot glue is still too hot. It is it is deforming the plastic, but it's still going to serve its purpose. It's going it's going to hold nice and tight. It's not going to fall apart. And there we go. We've got a glue trap. Uh, not a glue trap. That's a different kind of trap for a different purpose. We've got a homemade beer trap using pop bottles. So it's another use for some otherwise thrown away plastic. Now obviously all these demonstrations, you know, I am going to be making them, they're not going in the bin. Uh, I am going to sort of play about with this stuff, see if I can come up with some sort of use for it. I mean plant labels is fine, you could use them as, um, you could use them as things for sort of propagators I suppose. If you wanted to put a plastic bag over a plant, you could use them to support the edge of the plastic bag. And then um, it sort of plastic bag pressing down on the plant. You could just use it as a bit of wind defense, a bit of a collar, a bit of plant support. You could, I suppose, put it on something flat like a mushroom tray, fill it with compost. You've got a little bit of a pot. There's lots of uses, but you know we're not going to go into that too much. Let me just quickly unplug this hot glue gun because we're about because I'm about to go outside. To do to show you the tomato from the uh, one seed challenge as so we're going to go out and we're going to pop that up into its final pot and it's going to go out in the greenhouse but that's it guys like i said i'll then bury this i probably wouldn't even need to bury it with it being so shallow but i'll bury this up to there i'll put maybe one to two per eight foot by four foot bed and the slugs will prefer this over your plants and that's it guys that's it that's job done a little bit wonky i don't know if that's that's the effects of the hot glue but there you go hot glue gun don't use a hot glue gun it doesn't work use sellotape or super glue or pva glue which is what i'm going to do for the last one but there you go and then it's uh, 
you want just to quickly top some beer up into it if it's evaporated you can just pop the top off to empty it just take it out the ground tip them out into a bucket away you go the next one in this series is going to be hopefully how to make and harvest your own nematodes to help fight slugs so please subscribe for that that's a few weeks in the making that one uh, because I've got to harvest somewhere in the region of 20 to 30 slugs which is proving surprisingly difficult so for now guys I'll see you in a bit we're going to go outside we're going to pot up the one seed, one seed challenge uh, beef steak tomato that I've done uh, and we're going to put that out in the greenhouse so I'll see you in a minute okay guys this is my one seed challenge beef steak tomato you can tell that because it says it on the label and it says beef steak on this side now it went a little leggy but this was done just on a windowsill it was sown four or five weeks ago now from a seed from grow seed i am going to pot it up slightly what i'm going to do is it's going straight in one of its in its final destination pot so it's going it started in here and it's going straight into here it is going to stunt it a little bit tomatoes are not too keen on being potted on but i'll point you at the action so as always i've got my trusty jack's magic no scoop i've taken it down the bottom of me. Oh. this is wet heavy it's going in the same compost same type of compost it was started in it was started in jack's magic and it'll stay there stay in jack's magic lovely stuff i love this stuff it's great great quality and then couldn't be simpler you see me do it loads of times i'm going to go as deep as i fancy So what's that probably about eight inches deep I'm going to offer the pot up though I'm not going to just go ahead with that yeah that'll do so let's not dump the label in the hole so I mean you can kind of tell how young the plant is it has reached the bottom of the plot, plot, but, you know, it would have been happy in that pot for a little bit longer. But I thought, as I'm moving it outside, I might as well also pot it on. With tomatoes, don't pot them on, don't, don't press too firmly. They are a little bit delicate, you will snap them. I'm going to put a little bit more compost in here. I didn't go as deep as I thought I had. I mean, you can see, I'm still only going up to the seed leaves. Um, and this is, like I said, this is going to get labelled back up and just go into the greenhouse. So that's an update on my one seed challenge. Um, so, you've just seen, that's the beef steak tomato in its uh, final resting spot. We've got... So on my seedlings here we've got um, some lettuces which really poor germination on them. I'm going to do a second sowing. Got what we got back here? Some basil, my ne nemesis. We've got some French marigolds. I've got not too good. Sorry about that. Not too good um, germination on my French marigolds. But once again, hundreds of those seeds. So we'll sow some more on. These are some chili peppers that just got evicted. That is one of the tomatoes, I don't know if you recall me mentioning if you were there on the live stream, that's one of the tomatoes that doesn't look like a tomato. That's from the same packet. Let me give you a bit of a ooh, extreme close up. Casting a shadow on it there. Hopefully you guys can see it. Uh, so they're from the same packet seeds. Let's go figure, eh? We've got one of the Elise, uh, not the Elise Craig, one of the Showmaster onions. My pea sprouts, my sunflower seeds for the sunflower challenge, my chives need watering, 
Clementine. Um, guys, if anybody's local to Scunthorpe and wants a Clementine, let me know, because, yeah. And what we've got down here, we've got my second sewing of KNs. Can you see me? Yeah. Some Fasalis, they're, they're up for sale. Some chili peppers, also up for sale. And down at the bottom there, we've got some green beans. And on this side, we've got all the chili peppers. Some more Showmaster onions. So they're not doing much, but I'll, I'll grow them on. We're not doing any shows, so. And then we've got the peppers that got evicted a while ago. Can you see them? No. You can now. We've got a KN down there. Believe it or believe it not, that KN down there is on exactly the same time as them. Exactly the same time. The difference is that one was these ones or this one in particular wasn't topped. This one was. And it was just one that took off a lot quicker. And then we've got two of the also two moneymaker tomatoes that came from the same packet as those weird ones. But aside from that, I'll just show you Mrs. Shed sunflowers if I can get them in view. Down here look. Nothing going on there yet. Some uh, second sowing of Swede. They're the second sowing. There's first sowing there that's in the egg box. I'm going to water in here tonight. Got some uh, African marigolds. Some cornflowers and some other bits and pieces back there which I'm not going to show you. Uh, we've got a bit of activity in the peas, in the PTP. So they've all got little shoots in them. The at home veg garden. I'll edit all this out if you guys can't see it that well. We've got radish in containers, they're coming up. The cut and come again lettuce, they're coming up. Carrots. I don't know if you can see them, but they're up. What else we got? Mine and Charlotte's. Uh, sunflowers, not doing much. Green beans, onions, mint, patty pan squash, still not showing up. I would expect that to show up by now. And then rows of sunflower. None of the sunflowers are doing anything yet. Let's have a look. Let's, let's end the video here, eh? little strawberry flower. So until next time, guys, I'll see you later.